Today's topic we're going to deal is called milk and parables. Milk and parables. There's a, a, a rise of unlearned Israelites running around screaming, we eat meat and not milk. We are a full age. And my response is that right? You're of full age. Okay. Alrighty then. Let's see what the Bible says about that. Let's open up with Hosea chapter 12 and verse 10. In our repenting, let us be mindful of the spirit of pride. The spirit of pride. You have 19 year olds been in the truth six months talking about I'm a full age. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Are you kidding me? I'm not impressed. Not impressed at all. Hosea chapter 12, verse 10. Hosea 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions and used similitudes by the ministry of the prophets. So, when the Mosai spoke through his holy prophets, our forefathers, he used similitudes. A similitude is, give me another word for similitude, Steve. Parable. Parable, which is an illustrated story. The word, give me the word that Paul used. Paul used another word. Anybody know the word that Paul used? Leon. He said, um, me. Oh, no. no. Joel. An allegory. Very good. Allegory. Paul used the term allegory. <clears throat> Give me that. That scripture in Galatians. Mm -hmm. Let's get that one real quick. I should respond. We're not going to go through that one today. That's not on my list. But it is a, it is a parable. Galatians 4, verse 24. Which things are an allegory, for these are the two covenants, the one from Mount Sinai, which gendereth to bondage, which is Agar. He was referring to the old covenant there. Okay. That's the one, that's the covenant that gendereth to bondage. All right, but notice the word he used, which things are an allegory. Can we look up that word allegory? Anybody got a dictionary up in here? Allegory. A double L E G O R Y. A representation of an abstract or spiritual meaning in concrete or material forms. A representation of what? An abstract. An abstract. Or spiritual meaning. Or spiritual meaning. Was there more to it? Uh, a symbolic narrative. A symbolic narrative. So Paul used the term allegory. So in Hosea 12 and 10 again, let's read that one again. One more time. Thank you, Yashu. Hosea 12 and 10. Hosea 12, verse 10. I have also spoken by the prophets, and I have multiplied visions. And I have multiplied visions. And used similitudes. And used similitudes. Similitudes is the same as an allegory, is the same as a parable. Go ahead. By the ministry of the prophets. By the ministry of the prophets. Now, if you are not familiar or have not read, the Old Testament, particularly the laws, it will be very difficult for you to understand the parables of Christ. I'm going to tell you that straight. I'm going to say it again in case I study. If you have not read the Old Testament, particularly the laws, it will be very difficult for you to understand the parables. But that's where I come in and the brothers up here with me. So now from there, let's go to Mark chapter 12. We're going to read a parable. Mark 12, verse 18. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. And the second took, took her, and died. 
neither left he any seed, and the third likewise. And the seven had her, and left no seed. Last of all, the woman died also. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. You know? mm -hmm. And Jesus answering said unto them, Do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Stop. So now, I have heard so many misunderstandings on this parable. See, brother, we ain't going to be married in the kingdom. Oh, that's what that means. Huh? That's the meaning. Wow. And that's that from you neophytes, you brothers that are newly come in, you novices, you Christians. Let's start again. Let's go right back up to verse 18. Wow. That's amazing. Verse 18. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Stop. Mm -hmm. Let's go from there. Let's go to Acts 23, verse 8. We, this will help us understand further the doctrine of the Sadducees and the Pharisees in terms of the resurrection, what they believe. Because many times, some of you may believe that the Sadducees and Pharisees were the same. They were the same people, but they had two different doctrines. Acts 23, verse 8. For the, for the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection. So the Sadducees teach there's no resurrection. You dead, you dead. That's it. Mm -hmm. Just like you got some Israelites that teach it's only appointed unto man once. Mm -hmm. Not even understanding that scripture. Right. Mm -hmm. They say, oh, there's no re regeneration. You don't mm -hmm. come back. Mm -hmm. Read it again. For the Sadducees say that there is no resurrection, neither angel nor spirit. They say there's no angels and there's no such thing as a spirit. Go ahead. But the Pharisees confess both. But the Pharisees confess both. They believed in the resurrection and angels and spirit. All right. So now let's go back to Mark 12 and verse 18 again. Mark 12, verse 18 again. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Stop. Mm -hmm. What is the first thing we must understand? From what we've read thus far. In order to understand this parable, yep. Phil. The law regarding death um, and marriage, in terms of if a brother dies, you have to take on his wife to have seed. Very good. We got to understand that law on raising of seed because verse 19 is telling you Moses wrote unto us. If a man's brother die and leave his wife behind him and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Yep. Let's go to Deuteronomy 25 to read the law on that thing. Deuteronomy 25, and we're going to read verse 5 and verse 6. Now, when you're home, you can read the whole chapter. Mm -hmm. I'm just getting to the point. Deuteronomy. 25 verse 5 If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger So now Joe and Bob are brothers I'm going back now I know I gave some heathen names <laughs> Hank did I say oh Joe and Bob Bob dies <laughs> The wife, Shaniqua, cannot go marry Julio now. She must marry Joe. Everybody with me? She got to marry Bob's brother. Everybody with me? Is anybody lost? You lost, Emma? Okay. Go ahead. If brethren dwell together, and one of them die, and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother, 
shall go in unto her. Now that stranger is not talking about another nation. Mm -hmm. It's using the term stranger in conjunction as another Israelite outside of their family, outside of the immediate family. Mm -hmm. Read it again. If brethren dwell together and one of them die and have no child, the wife of the dead shall not marry without unto a stranger. Her husband's brother shall go in unto her and take her to him to wife and perform the duty of an husband's brother unto her. And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead, that his name be not put out of Israel. So now, that son would not be named after the second brother. That son would be called the brother, the son of What's the name I used? Joe. Joe. Bob. Oh, Bob. Bob, who died? I thought the first brother. The first brother. Bob. Get those names. The first brother. I'll use me and I thought. I dropped dead. He's my brother. I dropped dead. I have no kids. Mm -hmm. He has to take my wife and my firstborn, the firstborn son would be my name. Son of Nathaniel. Not son of Ithan. It would be son of Nathaniel. That way, all the inheritance that I had would go to that firstborn. Everybody would understand that? It would not go to Ithan. Okay. Go ahead. Read that verse 6 again. Deuteronomy 25 verse 6 And it shall be that the firstborn which she beareth shall succeed in the name of his brother which is dead that his name be not put out of Israel Go ahead Verse 7 yeah. If the man like not to take his brother's wife then let his brother's wife go up to the gate unto the elders and say My husband's brother refuseth to raise up unto his brother a name in Israel He will not perform the duty of my husband's brother then the elders of the city shall call him and speak unto him. And if he stand to it and say, I like not to take her, then shall his brother's wife come unto him in the presence of the elders and loose his shoe from off his foot and spit in his face and shall answer and say, so shall it be done unto that man that will not build up his brother's house. So this law was based on what, what, and I'll say what law is this based upon? Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Love your neighbor as you love yourself. Because the law is based on that your name would not die in Israel. Your seed would carry on in your name. So that was the love of brethren. Leviticus 19, 17 and 18. Okay, go ahead. And his name shall be called in Israel the house of him that had his shoe loose. So it was frowned upon if you didn't raise up a seed in your brother's name. So now, from there. Let's go to Genesis 38. Let's... Hold Mark. Huh? Hold Mark. Let Mark go. Now we're going right back to Mark. I'm filling in the gaps to help us understand the parable. Genesis 38, and we're starting at verse 6. Genesis 38, verse 6. And Judah took a wife for Ur, his firstborn, whose name was Tamar. So Judah gave his... Took a wife for, his, for Ur, his firstborn. And the wife's name was Tamar. But well, watch this. And Ur... Judah's firstborn was wicked in the sight of the Lord, and the Lord slew him. So God killed Ur. Go ahead. And Judah said unto Onan, Go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. Now what I want you to notice is that Genesis 38 is before. Before Deuteronomy 25. Everybody see that? Because there's a misconception out there that the law started with Moses. Right. Not all of them, not all of them did not start with Moses. Many of them came way before Moses. Come on. And Judah said unto Onan, go in, go in unto thy brother's wife, and marry her, and raise up seed to thy brother. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. You see that? Right there. Onan knew that the seed would not be his. It would not be the son of Onan. Who would that child be called? Son the son of Ur. Read it again. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. That the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. What was the it that he spilled on the ground, Barnabas? The it that he spilled on the ground. Huh? 
I can't hear you. Stand up. What? Sperm. It's sperm. It's telling you right there. See <laughs> that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give seed to his brother. Go ahead. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord. Mm. Wherefore he slew him also. So why did God kill Onan, Azariah? Because he wouldn't raise up seed to his brother. Right. It was not because mm, let me get my words right. Mm -hmm. Because there's a, a doctrine out there that says, oh, you're not supposed to put seed on the ground. God, God don't like that. No, no, that's not what that's talking about. Why did God kill him, Ezekiel? He killed him because he didn't raise up seed to his dead brother. Because he did not raise up seed to his dead brother. That's why God killed him. He did not love his neighbor as he yeah, loved that's himself. The law he broke. That's the law he broke. He despised his brother. Everybody understand that? Yes. Now, in case somebody want to get stupid, is it okay to spill outside of this law? Could you spill your seed on the ground? Anybody got a clue? I was nervous. Answer questions. One, two, three. Bezalel. Uh, no, it's not a law that you can't. It's just that's what it says here. That's why I have a situation. Give me that law, mm -hmm. Leviticus uh, 15. Mm -hmm. yep. Here's the law. Write this down for you that don't know. <laughs> Leviticus 15, verse 16. Leviticus 15, verse 16. And if any man's seed of copulation go seed of cop seed of sex, sperm, go out from him, go out from him, and he shall wash all his flesh in water, mm -hmm. and be unclean until the even. And every garment and every skin whereon is the seed of copulation shall be washed with water and be unclean un until the evening. So how does the seed get on the garment and the sheets and all that, all, all that other stuff it mentioned? What did it say? Uh, and every garment. And every garment, meaning and clothes. And every skin. Skin, okay, that could be your furniture. skins on your furniture, could be on your sofa, it could be anywhere. Go ahead. Wherein is the, wherein, whereon is the seed of copulation, shall be washed with water and be unclean until, with, until the evening. So how does the seed get there? Nobody got a clue, cool Isaac? Um, he had to pull out. He pulled out and it went. <laughs> <laughs> the next verse tells you. Right. The woman also with him, with him, with whom man shall lie with the seed of copulation, they shall both bathe themselves in water. And so be, wash your behinds. And be unclean until the even. So now, let's go back to Genesis 38. <laughs> That was in verse nine. It's in the Bible. Don't be nervous. Right. Don't be nervous. These are the, these base. These are now. This is milk. What we going over is milk. These are the things you're supposed to learn before you get into Daniel 11, second Ezra, the 12 feathers. Don't worry about that. You need the milk here. This milk is going to help build the nation. Now, I'm going to show you that too. You eat you eat meat. Yeah, right. Come on. Yeah. Uh, Genesis 38 and 9 again. Back there. Genesis 38 and verse 9. And Onan knew that the seed should not be his. And it came to pass when he went in unto his brother's wife that he spilled it on the ground, lest that he should give the seed to his brother. And the thing which he did displeased the Lord, wherefore he slew him also. So now the Most High killed him. When you get a chance, read the rest of this history on your own. It says that Tamar deceived Judah, mm -hmm. the father-in-law, and had him lay down with her. And she instead, and she got pregnant with Judah's seed. Okay? Because the sons was wicked. We're going to go from there now. Let's go to <clears throat> Judges 21. Judges 21. Verse 25. Now this is the last verse of the book of Judges. Pay close attention. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. The reason I want to begin with this verse is because the very next chapter, you read about Israelites marrying Moabites. Read verse 25 again. In those days there was no king in Israel. 
Every man did that which was right in his own eyes. So there was no king, nobody to administer. Thou shalt not do this or do that. Everybody did what they wanted to do. So the next chat, the next book is the book of Ruth. Start at verse one. Mm -hmm. Ruth chapter one, verse one. Now it came to pass in the days when the judges ruled that there was a famine in the land. And a certain man of Bethlehem, Judah, went to sojourn in the country of Moab. So this Israelite brother went to the land of Moab. Who's Moab? Chinese. So-called Chinese. Come on. He and his wife and his two sons. So he took him, his wife, and his two sons to the land of Moab. The inheritance of Moab. Go ahead. Uh, and the name of the man was Elimelech. And the name of his wife, Naomi. And the name of his two sons, Malin and Chilon. Chilion, Ephrathites of Bethlehem, Judah. And they came into the country of Moab and continued there. And Elimelech, Naomi's husband, died. And she was left and her two sons. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. I wanted to get there because people, there's a new doctrine now. Because people cannot explain why these two Israelite men married Moabites, they go, oh, this woman was... Israelites. Mm -hmm. These women were not Israelites. That's why in Judges, the last chapter and the last verse tells you everybody did what was right in their own uh, eyes. They were not keeping the law. So now go ahead. And they took them wives of the women of Moab. <coughs> the name of the one was Orpah and the name of the other Ruth. <coughs> and they dwelled there about 10 years. And Malin and Shalion died also, both of them. So now God slew these two boys. These two sons died. Go ahead. And the woman was left of her two sons and her husband. So now, let's jump over to Ruth chapter 4. Ruth chapter, and no, Ruth did not write the book of Ruth. <laughs> the Israelite scribes wrote the book of Ruth. Yes. <laughs> let's go to Ruth. The last chapter of the book of Ruth, Ruth chapter 4, verse 1 through 6. Okay. Ruth chapter 4, verse 1. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsmen of whom Boaz spake came by. So now Boaz is a kinsman to Elimelech, mm -hmm. the husband of Naomi, Naom, Naomi, who had died and her two sons had died. So now, Ruth was sleeping at the foot. When you read the history, Boaz be in the bed. Naomi, Naomi uh, not Naomi, uh, what's her name? Naomi. Ruth is sleeping at the foot of the bed like some animal, like some dog, just trying to humble herself. So finally, Boaz understood that she wanted to uh, have a child to be married to the nearest of kin. Boaz was the nearest of Kim, but not the nearest. So this is what we're this is where we're at now. Come on. Then went Boaz up to the gate and sat him down there. And behold, the kinsmen of whom Boaz spake came by, unto whom he said, Ho, such a one, turn aside, sit down here. And he turned aside and sat down. And he took ten men of the elders of the city and said, Sit ye down here, and they sat down. So now Boaz saw the nearest of kin of Elimelech, Elimelech's family, he said, sit down, brother, sit down, sit down. He said, also, oh, you 10 judges, y'all sit down here too, because I need some witnesses to this thing. Come on. And he took men of the elders of the city and said, sit ye down here. And they sat down. And he said unto, and he said unto the kinsmen, Naomi, that is come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land, which was our brother Elimelech. So, Naomi, Naomi, is come out of the country of Moab. She's selling some land. So now this is the, how he starts off. He says to the brother, the nearest of kin, listen, your nearest of kin is selling some land, and I want you to buy it. Go ahead. And he said unto the kinsman, Naomi, that has come again out of the country of Moab, selleth a parcel of land which was our brother Elimelech's. And I thought to advertise thee, saying, buy it before the inhabitants and before the elders of my people. If thou wilt redeem it, redeem it. But if thou wilt not redeem it, then tell me that I may know. 
for there is none to redeem it beside thee, and I am after thee. Right, I'm near kin after you. He says, brother, you're close of kin to her, uh, to him, Elimelech. I'm next behind you. Go ahead. And he said, I will redeem it. He said, okay, I'm going to redeem it. I'm going to buy the land. I'm going to buy the land. Watch this. Then said Boaz, what day thou buyest the field of the hand of Naomi, thou must buy it also of Ruth the Moabitess, the wife of the dead, to raise up the name of the dead upon his inheritance. You all see that? Verse 5 is telling you what the entire book of Ruth is about. It's not about interracial marriage. It's about raising up seed to your dead brother. That's what the whole premise of Ruth is about. Come on, jump. Jump, you went to six? No, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. Verse six, and the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. I'm gonna mess up my inheritance. I don't wanna, no, no, no. I might mess up my inheritance if I take this daggone Moabite woman. Read it again. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself. Stop, do you remember his first answer? Mm -hmm. yes. He said, I, I will redeem, redeem it. it. Yeah. Now he says, but uh, listen. When you buy this land, you got to take this more about when we say, oh, no, 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 no. Because, no. yes, there was a law about no interracial marriage. That was a law. So they said, I'm not marrying her. Okay? Forget that raising of seeds stuff. I know, no. Read it again. And the kinsman said, I cannot redeem it for myself, lest I mar my own inheritance. Mar means to mess up. Destroy. Destroy. Okay? Go ahead. Redeem thou my right to thyself. Redeem thou my right to yourself. Brother Boaz, you're closer in, I'm closer in kin, but I relinquish it. You redeem it. You buy the land and you marry that Moabite. You deal with that. You deal with that. <laughs> Go ahead. For I cannot redeem it. Now this was the manner in former time in Israel concerning redeeming um, and concerning changing. For to confirm all things, a man plucked off his shoe and gave it to his neighbor. And this was a testimony in Israel. So now, jump down to verse 13 to 17. I'm just getting to the point. Jump over to 13. Uh, okay, verse 13. So Boaz took Ruth, and she was his wife. And when he went in unto her, the Lord gave her conception, and she bare a son. And the woman said unto Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, which have not left thee this day without a kinsman that his name may be, be famous in Israel. So now his name would be famous in Israel. Your son's name will not be blotted out. His name will continue through Boaz. Go ahead. And he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life and a nourisher of thine old age. For thy daughter-in-law, which loveth thee, which is better to thee than seven sons, hath borne him. Mm -hmm. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. Because remember, she had no grandkids. Both her sons was dead. She thought she was cut off. Mm -hmm. So that's why in verse 15, he shall be unto thee a restorer of thy life. Nay, uh, Ruth's son that Boaz gave her in the name of um, Elimelech's son would be a restorer of your life. He's going to look after you. He's going to give you that joy in your old age. Okay, come on. And Naomi took the child and laid it in her bosom and became nurse unto it. And who nursed the baby? Naomi. Naomi. The Israelite woman. Naomi nursed the baby. Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> and the woman, her neighbors gave it a name, saying, There is a son born to Naomi. And they called his name Abed. Obed. Obed. Excuse me. Obed. He is the father of Jesse, the father of David. See, so this boy, Obed, became the father of Jesse, who became the father of King David. You understand that? So now, from there, let's go to Matthew 1. Remember, that law on raising up seed to your brother is based upon loving your neighbor as you love yourself. That's why they're mentioned in the genealogy. Matthew 1, verse 5 and 6. That's all I want. Matthew 1, verse 5. And Solomon, Solomon, Solomon. Right. Solomon. This is not Solomon. This is Solomon. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And Solomon begat Boaz. Boaz of Rakah. And Boaz begat Obed. Didn't we just read that? And Boaz begat Obed. 
Of Ruth. Of Ruth. So she's mentioning why? Because of the law of raising up seed to your neighbor. Because of the law of loving your neighbor as you love yourself. Go ahead. And Simon begat Boaz of Rakah. And Boaz begat Obed of Ruth. And Obed begat Jesse. Mm. And Jesse begat David the king. And David the king begat Solomon of her that had been the wife of Uriah. So you see how it's continued. His, that's why he said, your son shall be famous. Mm -hmm. He's mentioned in the king of kings genealogy. Mm -hmm. You know, that kills that immaculate conception stuff too. Yeah, it's gone. It's gone. It's, it shouldn't even be a thought in you brother's mind. From there, let's go back now. Let's go right back to Mark 12. Mark 12 verse 18. Then come unto him the Sadducees, which say there is no resurrection. And they asked him, saying, Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife, and raise up seed unto his brother. Now there were seven brethren, and the first took a wife, and dying left no seed. Left no children behind. Go ahead. And the second took her, and died, neither left he any seed. And the third likewise. And the seven had her and left no seed. So all seven brothers had her and nobody left a seed behind, no children. Last of all, the woman died also. Mm -hmm. In the resurrection, therefore, when they shall rise, whose wife shall she be of them? For the seven had her to wife. Whose wife is she gonna be? Cause all seven had married this woman. Just. Go ahead. And Jesus answered and said unto them, do ye not therefore err, because ye know not the scriptures, neither the power of God? So now Christ gets on. He says, number one, you don't know the scriptures, and you don't know the power of God. Come on. For when they, for when they shall rise from the dead, when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Read it again. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry, nor are given in marriage. Stop. Mm -hmm. What type of marrying and given in marriage is Christ talking about? Zakai. Uh, Ezekiel. I'm not sure. Yahshua. Can you read verse 19 for these brothers again? Mm -hmm. I'm going to jump off the podium. <laughs> Master, Moses wrote unto us, If a man's brother die, and leave his wife behind him, and leave no children, that his brother should take his wife and raise up seed unto his brother. Now read verse 25. 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. Stop. What type of marry or given in marriage? What type? Leon. I'm raising up seed to your brother. Raising up seed to your brother. Remember the topic of the parable. Raising up seed. So in the resurrection, he says, they neither marry nor are given in marriage. That's why I took y'all to Genesis 38. That's why I took y'all to Ruth. It discussed marriage. What type of marriage? Marrying when your brother dies, you marry his wife. What type of giving in marriage? When somebody goes to you and says, listen, you're nearest of kin. You got to take the woman as your wife and raise up a child to her. Read it again. Verse 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry. They neither marry, meaning marry the dead brother's wife. Go ahead. Nor are given in marriage. Neither are they have to be told that they got to marry the dead brother's wife. Go ahead. But are as the angels which are in heaven. But are as the angels which are in heaven. Give me that in the uh, Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. What does it mean we're like the angels? Wisdom of Solomon chapter 2 verse 23. Wisdom of Solomon 2 verse 23. For God created man to be immortal. Read it again. For God created man to be immortal. Read it again. For God created man to be immortal. In the resurrection, they shall be as the angels. Meaning, they shall be immortal. If you are immortal, Zakai, 
Is there a possibility you might drop dead and your brother has to marry your wife? No. no, there's no possibility. Why? Because in the resurrection, you shall be as the angels, meaning immortal. Immortal. God's upon the earth. There's going to never be need that you drop dead and your brother got to raise up seed in your name. That law will not be amongst us no more. Does everyone understand that? Yes. Back to Mark 12 again. Mark 12, verse 25. For when they shall rise from the dead, they neither marry nor are given a marriage, but are as the angels which are in heaven. Now let's go to Zechariah 12 and 9. Are we going to have wives, brother? It's so much simple. You leave that Christianity alone. Christianity will keep you stupid. Guaranteed. Guaranteed stupid. It'll make you effeminate. <laughs> you hate women. Exactly. Yeah. Zechariah 12. And we're going to start at verse 9. Zechariah 12, verse 9. And it shall come to pass in that day that I will seek to destroy all the nations that come against Jerusalem. All nations that come against Jerusalem, the Most High will destroy them. Come on. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. What does the term grace mean? Phil, grace. He will pour upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. Ezekiel. Mercy. 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 That's why this time period we're in right now without rehearsing the righteous acts, this is all mercy. For those of us, and I pray we all make it, because this is in the wilderness right here, what we're reading about. He said he's going to pour upon us mercy and supplication. Read it again. And I will pour upon the, the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplications. And they shall and look. You know what? What is the most, what is the requirement of the most high? What does the most high require of us to be saved? You can give me a scripture. Barnabas. What does it say? Remember my question. What does the Lord require of us to be saved for salvation? That's my question. <clears throat> this, now this is for all you meat eaters. Mm. I eat meat. I don't deal with the milk. Okay. Yeah. It is 12 verse 13. What it say? It said, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. Okay, that's very good. Something else. That's right. I have the Apostle from Ecclesiastes chapter 19, verse 19. Mm -hmm. The knowledge of the commandments of the Lord is the doctrine of life, and they that do these, wait, and they that, excuse me, and they that do things that please him shall receive the fruit of the tree of immortality. Okay, all right, let me hear, I want another one. Yeah, sure. Uh, Deuteronomy 10 and 12. It says, and now Israel, what does the Lord thy God require of you? But to fear the Lord thy God, to walk in all his ways, and to love him, and to serve the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. To keep the commandments of the Lord and his statutes, which I command thee this day for thy good. So now, you know, all that that y'all read is good, but I got one problem with that. I'm going to tell you what the problem is. You have, there are certain Israelites who only deal with the Old Testament and those laws. Uh, see, now you, some of y'all stump now. I didn't give y'all the answer. I'm seeing who's thinking. I'm, I'm, I'm testing y'all. I'm on. Uh, I want a scripture. You got a scripture for yes, me? Scripture. What you got? Uh, Revelation 14 and 12. Ah, I like that one. Give me that. Give me that. Give me that. Revelation 14 and 12. Give me that. <laughs> He's cooking with gas there. Now all the scriptures y'all put was good. They were very good. But the problem with them, you need to follow up. Because somebody, if they say, well, I ain't got to believe in JC, Yahweh Shai, I don't need him. Yeah, you do need him. That ain't what you just said. Here we go. Revelations 14, verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. 
Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Y'all see that? Here are they that keep the commandments of God. That's what them scriptures y'all read. But this is a part you needed. And the faith of Jesus. And the faith of Christ. And the faith of Yahweh Shah. Everybody see that? You have to have them too. That's the grace and the mercy that we're going to get. That's what the Lord requires of us. If you don't understand 2nd Ezra 11, can you get salvation? Yes. Uh, does somebody shake his head no? If you don't understand Daniel 11, that's what I meant. Can you get salvation? Yes. If you don't understand the 12 feathers, can you get salvation? Yes. If you don't understand Daniel 7, can you get salvation? Yes. If you don't understand Revelation 13 breakdown, can you get salvation? Yes. yes. Read it again. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Those are the two stipulations that God requires of all Israel to be saved. Let's go back now to Zechariah. For you meat eaters. I eat milk. Um, yeah, okay. Idiot. Zechariah 12 and 10 again. Zechariah 12 verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace. So that grace comes in us keeping the commandments and having the faith of Christ. Come on. And of supplication. Here come, watch this. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. When we see the Son of God, when we see the King of Kings for ourselves, like he says, give me that, give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 13, and give me the one in Ezekiel 20. 20. Y'all, so which one you getting me? Ezekiel. Okay, okay I want Corinthians first. Thanks. Give me 1 Corinthians 13. You know what verse? Yeah. What verse is it? Uh, and you gotta get the verse too. Write this down. This goes in conjunction with Zechariah 12. And 10. 1 Corinthians 13, verse 12. For now we see through a glass darkly. For now we see through a glass darkly. Any Israelite that tells you they know everything, you better head for the hills. Leave that dumb Negro alone. Brother, I know it everything. Well, why don't you deliver your fat, stupid behind out of captivity? Huh? You can't. You don't know everything. If you knew everything, you wouldn't have hatred for your brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. right. Mr. I know everything. Read it again. For now we see through a glass darkly. We see, the, the Bible is the glass we see it through darkly. Okay? The Most High has given us a certain level of understanding. If we knew everything, would we, would we need Christ? No. no. Read it again. For now we see through a glass darkly. But then... Face to face. But then face to face. Then face to face. Was that it? No. When that verse. So what is that verse? Now I know in part, but then shall I know. Now we read it again. Read it again. Okay. For now we see through a glass darkly, but then face to face. Now I know in part. All of us. All the entire nation of Israel. I don't care what camp there is. The Bible says we what? Know in part. We know in part. Part. Anybody that says they know it all, they call them the most high God of life. Mm -hmm. And you need to leave them. Come on. But then shall I know even as also I am known. Because he's going to deal with us face to face. Now, let's get the prophecy in Ezekiel 20. What right. verse is it? This is the book of Ezekiel chapter 20 and verse 35. And I will bring you into the wilderness of the people. Because when we get delivered out of here in the midst of the thermonuclear destruction, we're going to be taken to the wilderness. Go ahead. And there will I plead with you face to face. You see that? Then he will plead with us face to face. He's going to answer all our questions. He's going to explain everything to us from the beginning. From Genesis all the way up, all over again. He's going to explain all the laws. He's going to explain where we've been, where we're at, and where we're going. Was that it? That was it for that. So now let's go back to Zechariah 12 and 10. Zechariah 12 verse 10. And I will pour upon the house of David 
and upon the inhabitants of Jerusalem the spirit of grace and of supplication. We y'all bet we all better be thankful for the grace and mercy of the Most High. Come on. And they shall look upon me whom they have pierced. Why are we gonna look upon him? Because we're gonna see him face to face. Go ahead. And they shall mourn for him. And we're gonna cry when we see the king. Go ahead. As one mourneth for his only son. Imagine your only son dies. You're gonna have that feeling in you. You're gonna cry like that type of cry. Go ahead. And shall be in bitterness for him. As one that is in bitterness for his firstborn. So if you can only imagine your child dying. Y'all see TV when mothers, sons die, how they break down? All Israel gonna break down just like that. When we see him face to face. Come on. In that day shall there be a great mourning in Jerusalem. As the mourning of Hadadamah in the valley of Megadon. That's the history when Josiah mm -hmm. got killed. It said all Israel wept for days behind the death of King Josiah. Go ahead. And the land shall mourn. Every family apart. Notice this, every family apart. The family of the house of David apart and their wives apart. What, we gonna have wives? And their wives apart. <coughs> Come on. The family of the house of Levi, Levi apart and their wives apart. The family of Shimei apart. That's Simeon, Shimei is Simeon, the tribe is Simeon. And their wives apart. All the families that remain, every family apart and their wives apart. So in that day, we going all of us gonna be separated, the men from the women, and we're gonna look upon the Son of God and mourn and cry for him and ourselves. Okay? From there. Saying the same thing over here. Go ahead, what you saying? It's, it's saying the same thing in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 20, when you read on down. Um verse 42 Let's get to 44. Ezekiel 20 again? Yeah, Ezekiel 20. <coughs> Go ahead. In verse 42. And ye shall know that I am the Lord when I shall bring you into the land of Israel and to the country for which I lifted up mine hand to give it to your fathers. And there ye shall remember your ways and all your doings wherein ye have, wherein ye have been defiled. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sights for all the evils that ye have committed. See that? So none of us got it 100% right. Read that verse again. Mm -hmm. That bottom precept of verse 43. Mm -hmm. It's telling you. And ye shall loathe yourselves in your own sight for all your evils that ye have committed. Y'all see that? Because when Christ speaks to us, he's going to explain everything all the sins that we're doing that some of us are doing we don't even know is a sin he's going to explain and that's why we're going to give all praise and honor to him for that grace and supplication that mercy that we all need okay from there let's go to matthew 13. Mm. yeah the mercy is in 44. Yeah. read it I thought you read all the way down. Verse 44 is the mercy. And ye shall know that I am the Lord, when I have wrought with you for my name's sake, not according to your wicked ways, not according to your corrupt doings, O ye house of Israel, saith the Lord. Right, right. Y'all see that? That's why, give me that scripture in Revelation 12 about the blood of Christ. Give me that real quick. Revelation 12, verse 11. And they overcame him. And they overcame him. The him is the devil. The him is the evil white man and his, his, his doctrines out here. Okay. Come on. And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives unto the death. See that? And they overcame him by the blood of the lamb. That's that sacrifice Christ gave for Israel. That's how we're going to overcome. That faith in Christ. Not because of your deep knowledge, brother. Because you speak all these languages, that's going to get you saved. Are you for real? Are you kidding me? You idiot! The only thing that's going to get us salvation is the blood of the Lamb. Faith in Him and the keeping of the commandments. That's the requirement God has for each man and each woman. Nothing else. 
for all you meat eaters. You don't want the milk. Why we gotta learn this law? I don't need them law things. Y'all are simple as hell. That's the commandments you must know to keep to the best of your ability. You gotta know about Christ. Okay, that's the faith you must have to overcome. Without them two things, you will not be delivered.